Well, in part one, with the help of my good friend, Professor Brian Smythe, we went through the design process of the bilge keels, and then using the university's water jet, we cut the steel to shape, and this time we're going to be putting it all together. My name's Alan Mulholland, I'm a solo sailor, and this is the story of how I built my Wave Rover 650. Three years ago, I refitted a 40-year-old Contessa 26 and took her on an amazing 7,800 nautical mile ocean voyage. We crossed the Atlantic twice, but a knockdown on the second crossing and COVID-19 put an end to my solo circumnavigation. So now, I'm building a new boat, smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Yeah, so I've owned a lot of welders because my company used to build steel and aluminum boats. And I, I've used the Lincoln machines, I've used uh, the standard, you know, big name welding machines. And I always had industrial machines, they were very heavy. Anyway, last year I sold them because uh, they were getting too heavy for me to carry around. And I bought this little machine here from this company called Canaweld. And I love it. Uh, let me just plug it in and I'll show you why. <laughs> And just so you know, Canaweld is not sponsoring this video. I know. <laughs> Wish they were, though. Anyway, it's very easy to use. It's uh, menu-driven, and like right now, it's, uh, it's on some certain settings. But I just basically push this button, and I can choose which process. So it does MIG, it does TIG, and it does stick. So we're going to do MIG. We're going to be welding steel. Uh, it can weld stainless, uh, aluminum, TIG, of course, uh, gas shielded or not, but we're just going to be welding steel. And then it tells you how to set it up. This is a part that's great because when you only use one process, you know, a couple times a year, you tend to forget where those plugs plug in. So I like to have that. It tells me, uh, you know, how to set it up properly. Then it asks you if you're using a mixed gas or CO2. We're, we're using a C25, which is a mixed gas. Um, what thickness wire are you using? And it goes from 023 up to 040. Uh, we're using 030 today. And then uh, this is for the trigger on the gun. I always leave it on to trigger. And then it asks you the thickness. This is the best part. Oh, fantastic, yeah. So, I say, you know, if you zoom in there, you can see that it's on quarter. It'll go up to 5 sixteenths, and it'll go way, way down to like 22 gauge. Right. So if you're welding on your car, you can weld there. Uh, I, I'm going to leave it at quarter today because most of what we're welding right now is quarter. But I've also welded 5 eighths thick steel on some of the farm equipment we have just by doing multiple passes. And uh, I can't say enough good about this machine. If you find it not hot enough, you can turn the current or the voltage up or down a little bit. Uh, so it's just very, very easy to use for somebody like me. Anyway. All right. Now, the main show. Okay. So, so we've got the uh, bits of, uh, all the little bits and pieces that we previously saw on the CAD program. And here they are in real life. And then these were the spreader pieces that are holding the keel at its widest part. And then behind them, right here, these are the side plates. And if you recall from Brian's tutorial on the computer, he was talking about the little notches. These are the little notches that have been cut by the water jet. And uh, yeah, we're ready to start assembling and welding. So we're just getting underway here. Brian is just marking the center of the, the, the top flange. And that second piece, that's what we're calling the foil shape. And there's a port and starboard. 
So that yeah. spacer is three sixteen. Three sixteen. Because spacer. that's what the rocker was on my boat. But you know, if you want to check your boat just to make sure that right. maybe your boat's flat at that point, or maybe it's an eighth at minus three sixteenths rocker. I'm gonna take a handy dandy heavy piece of steel laying nearby and hold the ends down. So now I know when I weld this other piece on there, that built-in camber will stay there. Now this is a, an evolution uh, dry cut metal saw. It makes a lot of noise, but it's a beautiful saw. It's interesting, the, uh, the blade actually looks like a woodworker's blade with teeth it, on it. It's the carbide tip blade, 14 yeah. inch carbide tip. So I'm just going to put my hearing plugs in. <laughs> Safety first. Yeah. Ready? Standing by. So now it starts to become pretty rigid right now right and it's only tacked together but you can see you can't bend that in any direction right now So Brian, what, uh, what stage are we at here? Well, we're just tacking it up right now. I'm just going to flip it up. Um, I'm going to grind back a lot of this. Uh, we never grind the welds off, but we grind them down. And uh, just see if I have any cracks or porosity or anything like that. And then uh, we're going to put it on the piece of quarter inch plate in the middle. And we're going to tack the front and back of the outside plate next. Right on. So Brian, what uh, what went right, what went wrong, what could be improved? Uh, just give us an overview of this. Okay, uh, putting them together we ran into several unanticipated issues. One of the ones was these holes here. I moved them out half an inch because on the inside, or I guess it would be on the outside of the fin, it's difficult to get the bolt in. So. We may move those holes out a little further just to facilitate putting the bolts in. Um, looking at it from the front, maybe we'll look at this one. The angles of these, uh, of this pipe, are very difficult. So when you're trying to get these angles right, take small cuts, and, uh, and then we finish this one off with, with a, a zip cut on a grinder by just putting it below the plate and flattening it out before we welded it. So, so that's the pipe we're talking about. That's the leading edge pipe. Yeah. Uh, one of the 
plates, and I think it's this one, the, the hole that the uh, water jet cut wasn't square. I don't know why. We'll fix that in the plans. Um, what else happened? Right now we just have them tacked up uh, and we'll do the finished welding later. Um, but I think all in all it went together. Oh yes, the outer plate is difficult to fit. And the reason oh, right. yeah. it's difficult to fit is because of the curvature of the bow. Like where the, where the bow curves down here, it's difficult to get that it's difficult to get these slots lined up properly because uh, you can't put the plate far enough down because it hits on the front and on the back. So what you have to do is bend the front and the back in with a weight or a clamp and then tap the plate down until it lines up with the slots. Right. And uh, by the time we did the second one, that uh, we had that down pretty well. So it is what now? Four o'clock now? Yeah. So the the so we started a little after eight this morning. Um, we took about an hour for lunch, so um, we could call that seven hours. Right. So but we were also figuring out how to do it at the same time, exactly. and we were filming, so that always the second sucks one up. went faster than the first one, of course. And I would say there's probably between there's probably two hours per fin left. Uh, to do the full welding and the grinding back and checking for any porosity and filling that and regrinding it. So I'd say there's probably two hours left per fin. But in general, I mean, it's pretty impressive to get two of them together in one day. Right, yeah, no, very fast when you consider uh, how long a regular keel would take. Now, after the keels are complete, uh, then they have to be filled with lead, 400 pounds of lead per keel. That'll be another episode but uh thank you very much brian for for all your assistance i mean from designing these to fabricating them it's been a huge time saver for wave rover so big round of applause for yourself ah! <laughs> Beer time. Yeah. i'd like to take a moment to honor the wave rover benefactors so what is a benefactor well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now, these donations truly are much appreciated. So, you know, probably about seven, seven and a half hours to fabricate these with with you know Brian's help he's a terrific welder we were able to make all the bends just with very very rudimentary tools anyway uh, the next step is going to be to uh, do all the finish welding it's just tacked so once it's finished then it'll be fared and then we have to fill them with lead but as always rovers thanks for watching well the wave rover patrons with their pledges of support really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. One more.